Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to talk about consecutive integer problems, which are a type of word problem. So the first thing that I want to talk about is how to represent just consecutive integers. So first of all, what are consecutive integers? So integers are like whole numbers, but they could be positive or negative. So like 2, 3, 4 would be consecutive integers, or 27, 28, 29, or you could have negative numbers. You could have like negative 13, negative 12, negative 11. So these are consecutive integers. So the thing I want you to notice about this is, is just how do they increase? So to get from two to three, what do you do? You just add one, right? And then to get from three to four, you add another one. Same thing here, 27 to 28. So you start here, you just keep adding one. So the idea with consecutive integer problems then usually is you don't know what the, the first, I can't spell first. <laughs> okay, you don't know what the first integer is. So you let x represent it. And then if you have a second integer, you represent that by x plus one. And you do that because it's, it's exactly what's up here, right? So to get from one to the next, you just add one. Now, if you have a third integer, which sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, um, then you'll just add another one onto this. So this will be, the third integer will be x plus one plus one, which is equal to x plus two. So this is how you represent consecutive integers in word problems. So I want to show you some examples of how this works. Okay, so the sum of two consecutive integers is 73. So find the integers. So if you've watched my other word problem videos, one of the key things that I, I think about first is where is the equal sign? So is represents the equal sign. So I've got the sum is 73. So that means that the sum equals 73. So the only thing I have to figure out now is what is the sum? Well, I don't know what the first or second integer are, but that's where this little guide comes in handy. So I represent the first integer by writing out x, and then I, re I represent the second integer by writing out x plus one. So there you go. And so now from here, it's just a matter of collecting your like terms. So I get two x plus one equals 73. And then I can solve as usual. So I can subtract off the one, I've got 2x equals 72, and if I divide, let's see, both sides by 2, I'll get 36. Now, remember, the question here was to find the integers. So the integers then are going to be 36 and 37. Now, you can check that pretty quickly, right, by just saying 36 plus 37 is 73, so we're good to go. Okay, so I have another one here, and so, you know, if this kind of makes sense to you, you might actually want to pause the video and try this. The sum of three consecutive integers is negative 33. Find the integers. Highly recommend you pause here. Okay, so in this case, I've got the sum is negative 33. So there's my setup. So now I just have to get the first, second, and third integer. But that's exactly what I was talking about back here, right? So here's my first. Here's my second, and here's my third. So my first integer was x, the next integer is x plus one, and the third integer is represented by x plus two. And those are all gonna equal negative 33, and so now I can solve as usual. So if I collect my like terms, I get three x plus three equals negative 33. I can subtract off the three as shown. I get three x equals negative 36. I divide both sides by three, and I get x equals negative 12. Now, once again, we're not done. The question says to find the integers, so now I have to find the three. Now, sometimes working with negative numbers throws people off, so remember, you start here at negative 12. If I add one to negative 12, I get negative 11, and then if I add one to that again, I get negative 10. So those are my three integers. And I highly recommend you just do a really quick check that you found the right number by, or the right numbers by actually adding them together, right? That would be a really quick check. Okay, so now I want to pivot and change the problem slightly to talk about consecutive even and odd integers. So first things first, what does it mean to be consecutive even integers? So this would be like four, six, eight. So they're consecutive, but they're all even. Or I could have something like, uh, let's see, negative 10, negative 8, negative 6. 
So these would be consecutive even integers. And then what about consecutive odd integers? What would those be? That would be like 3, 5, and 7. Or you could have something like negative 13, negative 11, negative 9. So that's the idea behind consecutive even versus odd. Okay, so now the, the thing to notice here is that, let's see, we'll start with this one. So the, the first one, the first integer is always represented by the letter X, so in both cases. Now here's the interesting thing. If I start with X, how do I get to the next even integer? So look at what I have here. I started here, so this is four. How do I get from four to six? I add two, right? So I add two. So the second integer, I'm gonna add two. Now, let's compare that for the odd integers. If I start here at three, how do I get from three to five? It's actually the same thing, right? So it's still, you add two. So the setup actually for even and odd integers, it's the same. And I think this throws people off because they see a two and they're like, but it's supposed to be odd. So what will happen in the problems is there will be something in the problem that will end up making the X odd or even, depending on what the language is, if it's supposed to be consecutive, even, or odd. So don't get hung up on the fact that this says X plus two. It's like, I know it kind of fights against your brain because you're like, oh, it's supposed to be odd. So notice what happens here. If I start with an odd number and I add an even number, i.e. if I add two to this, I stay odd, right? So this is a property of odd numbers. That's why I can add two to this and be okay. And then if I wanted to get to the, the third integer in both cases, so I would just add two to this again, right? So two to this one. So this will come out to X plus four. So it's the same setup for both. Okay, so now let's take a look at a couple of examples. Okay, so now let's find the, the sum, the sum of two consecutive even integers is 110, find the integers. So very similar, right? But the only difference from this and the first problems we saw was there's this little thing that says even. So that's how we know we've got to use that setup. So the thing to notice here is, so first of all, where is the equal sign? The equal sign is still right here where we see the word is. So this sum is going to equal 110. So now I just have to figure out how do I get to the sum? Well, the first integer is always represented by X. So X is always my first integer. And now for the next integer, that's where the fact that these are consecutive even integers comes into play. The second integer is represented by x plus 2, like this. So there's my two integers, and that's going to equal 110. So now I can take 2x plus 2 equals 110, subtract off the 2, and I get 2x equals 108. Divide both sides by 2, and I'll get that x equals 54. So my two integers then are, so let's see, my two integers, my integers are 54 and 56. And so again, notice you have a really quick check here. You can add those and find that you get 110. So you know that you found the right thing. Now, quick troubleshooting with this too. A lot of times when I see students work on problems like this, they don't think about whether or not the answer actually makes sense. These should be even, right? So if they are odd, then that no, you know that you made a, an issue, um, you have a problem with the setup. So you have to go back and kind of reinvestigate. Okay. So now let's pivot to three consecutive odd integers. So if you want to pause the video and give this a try, you might feel like you're ready to do it. Um, okay, so let's see. Three consecutive odd, odd integers. So once again, this is going to be my sum is equal to negative 87. So now I just have to take the three consecutive odd integers. The first integer is always represented by x. And then we talked about before how for odd integers, you still just increase by two. So this would, this would represent the second odd integer, and then this would represent the third odd integer. So that comes directly from this setup that we were talking about back here. So I add those up and I get negative 87. Now, if we set this up right, it's actually built into the setup of the problem that X will come out as something odd. So like I said, I know it kind of can, fight against your brain like oh but it's even but it will it will turn out okay the thing that matters is that x ends up being odd so let's just keep going here so I've got my like terms 3x 
plus 6 equals negative 87. I'll subtract 6 from each side to get 3x equals negative 93. And then I can divide both sides by 3. And I get that x equals negative 31. So now, to get my three integers, I just have to add 2 to each one of these, right? So my first integer was negative 31. If I add 2 to that, then that'll be negative 29. And if I add 2 to that again, that'll be negative 27. OK, and so now for the last one. So this one's a little bit of a twist. This one's a little trickier. OK, so pay attention to the language here. Find three consecutive odd integers such that their sum is seven more than four times the largest integer. OK, so this is not quite as straightforward as the last ones. So the first thing I want you to do is pause the video for a moment and determine where the equal sign falls in this problem. Just what is the general setup? What would go on one side, what would go on the other side? You can just use words to determine this first. So pause and hit play when you're ready. OK, so it's the sum. And then we've got this word, their sum is. So the, you have the sum and then the equal sign. You always want to identify where the equal sign is. And then you have all of this, 7 more than 4 times the largest integer. So 7 more than, so that means you're going to add 7, 4 times the largest integer. OK, so I've just kind of set up the general framework here as far as I can. And so now I've actually got to start putting real things in here. So first, let's come up with the sum. So I need to come up with the sum for the three consecutive odd integers. Well, we just did that in the last one. So that's going to be x, x plus 2, and x plus 4. OK, so now I'm going to come over to this side. And so looking at this, I've got, just as a reminder, I've got x, x plus 2, and x plus 4. Which one of these represents the largest integer? The largest integer would be this right here, this x plus 4. So this is what I need to put into this multiplication then. So 4 times the largest integer will mean 4 times x plus 4. OK, and so now I'm really ready to go. I can collect like terms and I can distribute. So on the, le the left side, I'm going to have 3x plus 6. And then on the right side, I'm going to have 7 plus 4x plus 16. OK, so let's keep going. So now I've got 3x plus 6 equals 4x plus uh, 23. OK, so from here, now I'm just going to finish solving as usual. So I'll go ahead and subtract off the 3x. So I get 6 equals x plus 23. And then let's see, I'll just do this on the side here. So I'll subtract the 23 from each side like this. Oh, cannot write the 3 for some reason. And I get that x equals negative 17. So this ended up being odd. That's exactly what we needed. So then the three consecutive odd integers that I needed, that's what it's asked for. It's negative 17, negative 15, and negative 13. So that's it. And so that concludes kind of the overview of working with consecutive integer problems. If you have questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.